Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, and Shinrin Yoku. Don't forget Sacred Geography, bringing you a grand solar minimum. Update Monday, November 14th, around 8 p.m. Mountain Time 2022. Have you heard? The human race just hit 8 billion. We also have the first launch of NASA's mega rocket, Artemis 1, in just a few hours. And Ducono. Discrete high-level eruption to 35,000 feet. But the big story, coast-to-coast -coast cold as the U.S. plunges into winter. Keep calm. It's boom time. Weather forecast puts 20 states in the path of a snowstorm with frigid temperatures. So I hope you took your knickers out and your wool socks and that's you, Texas, too. Severe thunderstorms and a blast of cold air is coming to Houston. As Antarctica's latest minus 60 degrees C reading ever recorded just took place. Holy macaroni. Well, a storm system is beginning to take shape. A storm system is beginning to take shape across the southern tier of the U.S. today. Snow with accumulations are likely in the Southern Plains and the Upper Mississippi Valley as winter weather advisories and a few winter storm warnings are in effect. Also, strong to severe thunderstorms and locally heavy rainfall are possible from the upper Texas coast to the coast of Louisiana and Mississippi. Winter storm watches and warnings are in purple, so heads up for the entire Appalachian spine all the way down to South Kakalaki, Arkansas, northern Missouri, most of Iowa, Take a look. Click on your county for more info. Let's walk it through. You can see the snow on the northern end of this. Severe weather on the coast currently. That's going to be blowing up in the next few hours in the morning here in, well, New Orleans and Louisiana. So biggest threat for severe weather is directly on the coast there. You can see it. As in the back end, there will be that threat for winter weather as it moves to the east. By Wednesday, it'll be offshore. A little bit of cold air behind it, freezing your buttocks off. Let's take a look at the snowfall forecast. And we'll walk it through day by day. Here is your Monday into your Tuesday. So tomorrow, you should see most of the snow in Oklahoma. Well, you can see where all the snow is just going to lay out there across the country. Quite a, bit, a large swath of snow for many regions. Illinois, Wisconsin, Michigan, Minnesota, Iowa, Misery, Arkansas, Oklahoma, and then the Appalachians, specifically West Virginia, North Carolina. I'm going to be picking up the heaviest totals there, as well as Virginia and Pennsylvania. And that's going to move into New York State, the Catskill Valley. Could be coming all the way down towards Long Island, even. And the, all the states in the Northeast are going to pick up significant snow, and then the lake effect happens right behind it. Now, watch what happens when we push these models through. It's going to show ridiculous totals in the peninsula here, northern Michigan, and it's absolutely mind-blowing. This is like four to eight feet of snow in northern New York and Vermont on these models. So, could be some record-breaking things developing in the near future before we even hit December. Now, enjoy the sun while you can. Even more wild weather is about to strike Australia's east coast, bringing heavy rain, ferocious wind, and hail. Large parts of the east coast is saturated by a massive rain bands over the weekend. South Australia is still reeling from the worst power outage in five years on Sunday. Heavy rains and winds of up to 106 kilometers per hour left 163,000 people without electricity. So, Big things happening in Australia as an M6.1 quake strikes off of central Japan and jolts Fukushima. Now, this baby was deep, thank God, 357 kilometers deep, so not a lot of movement up at the top. Overall, no quakes of note. We have some aftershocks happening in the Fiji and Tonga region, 6.1 south of Fiji earlier today. And, well, the Reykjanes Ridge is still rumbling now for months. Here we are over in Hawaii. This is seven days all magnitude quakes. You can see in the Pahala area, there's been, well, damn near 100 quakes, multiple areas. This is Mauna Loa, or this is Kilauea, and over here we have Mauna Loa, and especially on that northwestern flank. If we just take a look at one day all magnitude, you can see the activity has quieted down a bit. Most of the activity now is in Pahala and Kilauea.
There's your Hawaii update. As we come over to Dukono, where we pointed out at the beginning here, there was a 35,000-foot eruption, one of the highest eruptions since Honga Tonga. So things are starting to heat up in the volcanoes worldwide. Now, this was a discrete high-level eruption, which was impulsive, lasting just a few minutes to 35,000 feet as explosive activity continues at Dukono. And that's in Indonesia. So, biggest puff in a while. So here we are at Space Weather News. There's nothing much happening on the desk. What we can see here is that the sunspot region in question that we were worried about producing maybe some geoeffective flares has not, and it is now turning off, turning away from Earth and away. The next threat for geomet geomagnetic activity here on the surface is this large coronal hole, which will be facing us in a few days. So in about seven days, we should be looking for some effects from this coronal hole as it passes us by. Other than that, all is quiet on the sun in one of the weakest solar cycles in over 100 years. Now the human race just hit 8 billion. 8 billion humans are living on planet Earth. A huge milestone officially projected for and now being recognized as of Tuesday by the UN. Why does it matter? Well, because the people that run the Earth don't want that many people. So there's that. Now the first CubeSat to fly and operate at the moon has successfully arrived. And many people didn't think it would get there. But now the moon has its first CubeSat flying around and around and around. And this is the Capstone mission. They received confirmation that Capstone arrived in near rectilinear halo orbit and that it, this is a huge, huge step for NASA and for humanity, I guess. Now, Artemis 1 and the first launch of NASA's mega rocket, you can watch it live on air. There is a 90% chance that it will launch at 1.04 a.m. Eastern Time. That is midnight 04 Central, 11.04 Mountain, and 10.04 Pacific. So plenty of time to figure out where the live stream is and look up. Well, look into the square. <laughs> now, you can look up in just a few days on the 5th. Well, tomorrow, the Leonid meteor shower is set to peak. And it could bring fiery shooting stars. And, well, the cause... Well, where is it? I've highlighted it. Well, it's not highlighted anymore. Damn it. Yep, it's gone. So, while... The next Leonid meteor shower storm from the branch of debris isn't expected until 2031. And what that means is that every 33 years, there is a debris field that we enter and the number of meteors increases. These types of things are unpredictable, according to the American Meteorological Society. And there is a chance we will encounter a different dust field in 2022 that's linked to the comet's 1733 visit. Now, this could produce anywhere between 50 and more than 200 meteors per hour in the waning hours of November 18th into the following morning. So, get out and look up over the next two days. Again, there are no guarantees for any of this as meteor showers are exceedingly fickle. And now, this is the remnants of Comet Tuttle Temple. And each year around this time, our planet drifts through the clouds of a comet's droppings left behind during previous trips through the solar system. So get out and look up for some Leonids. Now, one other thing, one other tidbit we want to leave you with. We're going to about to do a live stream over at Magnetic Reversal News at 9 p.m. on Alpha Prospects and Derlite. These are two companies that are working on atomic energy from water and plasmoid protium power. Many of you that watch Randall Carlson heard some tidbits of this technology, and tonight we're going to walk you through it. What is a plasmoid and what this could mean for humanity? Because what they've patented is for internal combustion engines that will use water as an atomic fuel. No waste, very little input, absolutely destroying the energy sector, well, and saving the earth. And that's a boom, the knowledge. Join us at Magnetic Reversal News in a little bit. And subscribe to this channel if you haven't. Become a Patreon, support the work we do. Share the video. Be a hero. We love you.
Be safe.